Hello, my name is Ben. And I'm Nora. And we are your hosts of the Too Vague Podcast this week. We have a word that's kind of a holdover or came from snacks, actually, in my mind. The word is cook. Oh, cook? I thought it was cooking. Well, it's cook. <laughs> <laughs> I just decided. <laughs> so should I go get my toque and put it on? Like the aprons that you used to wear that said, kiss the cook. Oh, God, Which yes. You, oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, um, okay, well. And in the words of Archie Bunker, if it's too hot in the kitchen, stay away from the cook. That was one of his lines. I don't from, get it. Exactly. That was Archie Bunker saying that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Do the kids right, know yeah. who Archie Bunker is and all in the family and all that? No, I'm sure they don't. There was a resurgence. They did a, a new all in the family with Woody Harrelson as Archie Bunker, but I'm not sure. Really? Yeah. Wow. But I'm not sure how well that went over. Especially given the character, right? It's like in today's day and age, yeah, is that kind of character what we want? And even something like Married with Children, that show also probably couldn't be done today. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. Well, those different generations, you know, that grew up with something different. And I'm sure many of them would look askance at things like All in the Family. Right. Right. And, and true, the um, the other one you mentioned, too. Married with Children. That was like a 90s show that clearly was trying to channel something that Archie Bunker had, I think. You think? Okay. Yeah. Probably. That show, All in the Family, to get off the subject of cooking, <laughs> that show had a lot of spinoffs, but it didn't have the most spinoffs. Apparently, the oh. most spinoffs... I believe it was Happy Days was the most spinoffs, but they were both kind of neck and neck with the number that they had. Yeah, yeah. The more noticeable ones that I remember from All in the Family were The Good Times was one. The guy who lived in the high rise moving on up. The Jeffersons. But that was a spinoff, wasn't it? Yeah, that was uh, a spinoff from All in the Family. Yeah. Yep. A couple of other ones, you know, like Archie Bunker's Place. Yeah, yeah. Carol O'Connor wanted to continue the character. And, right. Um, I think there was one where they tried to do one with Gloria, but that didn't go over too well. And there's a number of them that it's kind of like, oh, okay, they tried this and it didn't work. And like nowadays, it seems if one spinoff hits, the additional spinoffs typically yeah. will hit. What do you think about spinoffs? It can be stretched a little too far. Yeah. And you lose a lot of the original except maybe they want to but in that case it's a new show right period it's not a spin you know i don't i think they're just stretching it too thin yeah it's it's weird kind of like when do you ever do any cooking where you have to spin off something (laughs) i was trying to uh do a segue there but all right spinning i think of like things in the laboratory i don't think of cooking but there are probably some things that you need to prepare i would imagine maybe you could accomplish separating an egg in that way i don't know if that's there's a thing yeah very possibly i don't know i don't know um see i think of things like stretching taffy which was before my time right but not before my mom's time right you spin it if you've ever seen the machines in the stores in new jersey i guess (laughs) It's on the boardwalk. The uh, taffy is being, it's like in a figure eight, and it keeps kind of spinning around yeah. Yeah. in that figure eight. And then pu- it's pulling yeah. it, but it's strange. Yeah, and don't they refer to you when you're making cotton candy as spinning sugar? And there are certain things. You watch yeah, the British Bake Off. Yeah, sugar. Yeah, yeah. Spun yeah. sugar for, like, the, you watch the British Bake Off show, right? So Yes. Yeah, right. They don't make spun sugar very often. No. I wouldn't imagine no. as a, one of the focus ingredients on Iron Chef as sponge sugar. Right. <laughs> Let's talk about the word cook. Okay. To prepare by combining heated ingredients. Yes. I'm sorry. By combining and heating the ingredients in various ways, be yes. heated so that the condition required for eating is reached. Yes. <laughs> Next time someone's cooking something, I'm going to ask them if the condition required for eating has been reached. (laughs) Yeah, right, right, right. Informally, you've got alter to falsify, dishonesty, cooking the books. That's Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't think of that. Yeah. 
to be in an inescapably bad situation. That's another informal usage of the verb. Oh, I'm cooked? Yeah, your goose. Something like, like that. Your goose is cooked. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, what's cooking? There's also that informal sort of usage. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then the noun referring to a person who prepares or cooks food. Right. Do you refer to the person who's cooking the food as a cook? Sometimes. Personally? Oh, personally? I mean, like if I were in the living room and they were in the kitchen, what I say, hey, cook. Yeah. Where's, where's that pork chop you were, that, that kind? No, I don't. No. Do that. I, I think there are some distinctions to be made between a cook and a chef. Right. But let's get in. Because if, if you're a top chef, right. you're referred to as chef. America's top cook. <laughs> right. <laughs> America's top line cook. That's a good show. Let's let's market that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, What yeah. are you cooking today? Beans. Oh, wow. Beans, huh? Yeah, right. Right. Pretty impressive. I'm washing the lettuce tomorrow, yeah. Yeah. Working on the line. The unsung heroes of the kitchen in any sort of restaurant, right? Right. They kind of reduce the amount of work for the head chef, I guess. Yeah, you need people that you trust. Oh, yeah. You know, under you so you can tell them what to do. And right. Know that they're going to do what you say. Exactly. And not yell at them as much as, what's his name? Gordon Ramsay. Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> Right. Gordon Ramsay is an interesting sort of fellow because if you've ever seen him on, they have a kid's version of that show, MasterChef, and he did Kitchen Nightmares and, yeah, yeah. you know, all sorts of like bad kitchen-y things where he just yells at people and he's kind of a jerk. I don't want to see that. I want to see good kitchen-y stuff well, where everybody's polite, right? you know. Right. There's a level to which I think that's what people think makes good television. Uh -huh. People do enjoy that kind of like... Some people. Right. Some, some people. people do. Exactly. Conflict and... Like putting down... Yeah. Putting yeah. down people. Gordon Ramsay, when he interacts with children, he does have some sort of that venom left where he's trying to impart... You know, kind of like, hey, you know, but he's very supportive and he's very, you know, like his whole demeanor changes so oh, it's not I'll like you try and watch some yeah some of them are cute he does him and his other chefs will if, if a kid isn't doing something right you know they'll let him know but they're not gonna call him a sack of shit or anything <laughs> <laughs> sorry call him a sack of flour or anything yeah yeah right right one last thing on the word front the origin from latin cocus Oh. To popular Latin, which is cocus, I guess, cocus, cocus, and the Old hmm. English, which really I, it looks like cock, but it's got a little wiggly on, on, on the on the top there. So it, I think it's cook. It's a noun. Okay. Old English cook. Yeah. So that's where cooking, I guess, as a verb and a noun, cook comes from. I remember a time when you used to love to cook. I remember that time as well. I love to, to try all kinds of different... I'm, I, I'd be making recipes I never thought I'd make. Right. You know, uh, right. and yeah, it was fun. And sometimes it was not a good result, but edible. <laughs> right. It was fun to do all those things. Yeah. And that was, we were but doing then, Christmas dinners or yes. something, right? Is that what it was? Christmas Eve. Christmas yeah. Eve was the thing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And but, and you were interested in cooking at that time too. Correct. I was. Yeah. Later on yeah. I discovered that that's not people who work in restaurants that or work as a barista or work, you know, doing something yeah. where they're actually preparing food. It's a pretty thankless job. It can get rough. People can be oh. really kind of rude. Oh, yeah. I I I know that people are. Yeah. Uh, to wait staff, I, uh, cooks, I don't know, because, yeah. even, you know, if I'm in a restaurant. Even, like, dishwashers and bus people, it's uh -huh, still, uh -huh. they, they're very rude, too. Because I initially, I worked in a kind of a fancy-ish restaurant to try and see whether or not that's what, what I wanted to do, and I came to the conclusion, oh, it's okay. like, I want to do this for myself for fun, and I don't want to do yeah. it as a thing, so. Um, yeah. You've mentioned on the podcast before that, you're not good at waitressing or being. <laughs> a... 
Yeah. Was there ever a desire to do some cooking or was it just something that you enjoyed doing for your family and friends? That was it. Just for my, my family, my friends, yeah. uh, not, nothing, nothing else. Okay. You know, and I never had the desire to either. I did have the desire to look in strange recipe books and cook uh, things that more normal people might not. Like sleepy chicken? No, <laughs> please. <laughs> I don't want to gag yeah, again, okay. please. We won't talk about them. No memes, no TikToks. No. I made a a rabbit. Oh, okay. Yeah, how was it? Was it Hasenpfeffer? Yeah, I was going to I was going to say that. Yeah, Hasenpfeffer. We we had a couple of domestic rabbits that we got that were already we didn't have to do anything but cook them. Okay, so you didn't have to skin and them or anything, or you didn't no, hunt no, them? Or... No, 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 no. They were actually bred for eating somebody that uh, Stan knew. Okay. I didn't know rabbits were made of bread. <laughs> sort of like your cat is in bread. Oh, yeah. I, I've uh... got to, yeah, exactly. I've got to, I've got to reveal that Halloween costume uh, at some point. Yes. On the yeah, feed, yeah. but yeah, my inbred cat. Right, gosh. right, right. So now, I, what were we talking about? Bread? <laughs> no, no, we're not talking. We're oh, ta- rabbits, rabbits. Yeah, the rabbit, rabbits preparing the rabbit, the Hassenpfeffer. It was interesting. And the uh, sauce and gravy or whatever mm-hmm. reminded me of sauerbraten sauce somehow. Okay. It was good. And we had a nice big family dinner. Mm-hmm. It was surprisingly good. So that was one thing that, you know, you just don't think about yeah yeah no, no, that's, often. i was about to ask you if there was like a memorable sort of dish that you made ever and that's that that's it sounds like that's it like that's kind of that's like, yeah it's memorable yeah i only made it once mm-hmm. but it was yeah it was something that i was kind of proud of <laughs> yeah know? even though i was proud of other things too i made little german noodles okay spetzel, spetzel. Spetz, or spetz, yeah spetzel or spetzli some people might say right if they're German, German, right? And and I made those, even though it's a simple noodle, kind of. I you know I followed a recipe in a uh, German kind of cookbook, and I didn't have the thing to make the little dumpling-like things, so okay. I used a slotted slotted spoon. It took a real long time pushing the dough through the slotted spoon. <laughs> right, right. Because it has to break off into tiny pieces, mm-hmm. small pieces. Yeah. I, I remember that. Also, that was delicious. It reminded me of, in a strange way, of your mom's spinach casserole. Oh, yeah, the spinach stuff. You remember that? I love yeah. the spinach and stuff. It was the, delicious. The spitz, spitzel had nutmeg yeah. in it. Uh-huh. And so, and that, the, the nutmeg and butter and dough kind of reminds me of your mother's spinach casserole, which, yeah. oh, my God, that was good. And we say casserole, it's, it's just a delicious spinach uh, dinner uh, side dish. Yeah, like spinach. You know, it's just. Yeah, spinach and cheese, essentially, the main two ingredients. Spinach, yeah, right. cheese, maybe a little right. bit of egg to hold it all together, yeah, but yeah, yeah, not right. a ton. You don't know that there's egg in it. If you do put a little in there, it's just, it's mostly spinach and cheese, and it's delicious. It did have a nutmeg. Yep, nutmeg, nutmeg on top, too. And, and it's like, oh my God. It was yeah. That's one of my very favorite dishes ever. <laughs> yeah, I'm mine too. That's why we called it the spinach yeah. stuff. Right. We right. had all sorts of unique names for our food that mom cooked when yeah. we were younger, and spinach stuff was one right. of them. Also, cheap meat. That was another one that. Yeah, we yeah, really yeah. Liked. I remember that one. Yeah. Actually, I had I had a recipe for your mom's spinach stuff. <laughs> and oh, okay. I I th- I think it got. Uh, you know how you get rid of stuff when you get older because right. you, you just downsize. Mm-hmm. Well, I think it either went went in the house fire or <laughs> in the storage units okay. that I lost. Yeah. I don't have it anymore, but Adam tells me he has it. Oh, okay. That's good. The thing is, it's not fresh spinach, too. I mean, you could probably make it with I fresh know. spinach. It's like with the frozen but that makes it just yeah. very easy to to use, and it's actually pretty good. I'd rather use fresh, but well, I don't, yeah, I don't know how it would work with fresh. Yeah. Um, you you need to squeeze the juice out, though. I mean, the water out if it's mm. frozen, right? Which I, and I think it should be frozen. Yeah, because you know how spinach leaves 
are the size of your hand sometimes. Yeah. And then when you cook them, they're the size of your thumb. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it shrinks down so much. So I don't know how that would work with uh, putting it in that casserole. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the frozen spinach is already the size it's supposed to be. Right. Whereas with the, so, if you just stewed the spinach beforehand, you could probably do the same thing, but it would take longer. Like, kind yeah, of like, and you'd also have to dry it. That's true. But I mean, I'm, I'm thinking more like a collard greens kind of scenario with the fresh spinach. Oh, yeah. Keep yeah. it cooking for a long time and then, you know, just drain it afterwards. I think the frozen is uh, the best idea. It's, yeah, <laughs> it seems good. Yeah. And uh, cheese and spinach is a, like, as we covered on the snack episode and my friggin' weird ass quesadilla. Ah, um, yes. Yeah. Yes. With the uh, spinach and Right, and, cheese and spinach. Yeah, 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 great combo. Can't miss. I cooked last night. Oh, I cooked myself dinner. Okay. This is my cooking these days. I had a piece of salmon. Okay. Um, and I I actually baked it. Sometimes I bake it. Sometimes I stick it in a frying pan. Mm-hmm. But baking it is is good, and it was it was very good. You know, herbs and stuff on it. Right. I just finished it tonight. And the other part is I had some brown rice oh, okay. uh, with it, yeah, except it comes in a package and you heat it in the microwave. Okay. But you, you get it at Costco and it's really good. Yeah. It's not like the Uncle Ben stuff they have in the grocery oh, store. Oh, yeah, yeah, the quick, um, yeah. Yeah. And, and the other part of my dinner was frozen peas. <laughs> okay. So, all right, I cooked my salmon, which is not difficult. <laughs> Do you cook your rice in a rice cooker? No, I don't. Okay. Because no. it is so, I have one that's just for my, you know, just enough for me. And I can usually stretch it to three meals, splitting up the rice, let it sit in the thing yeah. for an hour or two. And then, it, you know, it's all done. Maybe even yeah. less sometimes. Well, if I ever get back to real cooking, which I did when I first moved here, yeah. I, I was making dinners for your dad and Anne, and, and we'd trade dinners, mm-hmm. and and I made real dinners, right? You know, right. Uh, at that time, but then you know, Anne and I did it a little bit, but not too much. Yeah, we go out to eat too often, but I do think about it. Yeah, rice cooker definitely a single man's best friend, I think. Yeah, because it's super easy, super quick, and good. It's delicious and good for you. Mm-hmm. You know. Just mm-hmm. as long as you don't put any craziness in there. But, you know, I just put a little, sometimes, you know, a little olive oil and that's about it. Mm-hmm. I like craziness in it, too. Yeah, you can <laughs> do craziness, but usually I put the craziness in afterwards. Oh, okay. okay. Not while I'm cooking it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've been experimenting. Actually, I, I told Adam that I did this once, and I think that he's done it, too, is uh, coconut water. So use coconut water or coconut milk instead of water. And then you kind of get a, wow. an interesting flavor to the rice. Oh, wow. A little sweet, a little sweeter, but it's, you know, it's got a oh, very light Oh, that sounds cooking. good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It would be great with stuff. I also do it with stocks, too. Occasionally I'll, I'll do it. Oh, I'll throw it I wondered about stock. that. Yeah, like a good fish or chicken stock. Right. Gives it a little bit of flavor and saltiness to it. Beans and rice, that's the way to go, man. Uh, yeah, I'm all for it. Yeah. What is the number of steps you have to, is is cooking something where you have to reach a number of steps in order to call it cooking something? Do I don't know. I don't have a specific number of steps. No. Is making a cup of tea cooking? No. However, I just cooked some cookies before you were we were going to do this show. Okay. I took them out of the little package they were in from the grocery store. Right. And I put them on the cookie sheet and stuck them in the oven. Mm -hmm. So I cooked them because I stuck them in the oven. Right. However, I bought them from the grocery store pre-made into little balls, kind of. Okay. So you baked them. So did did I cook? Yeah. Right. Right. There is a semantic argument here. Right. 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 I always thought of it as number of steps kind of as as sort of my benchmark like if it ha- if it contains hmm. more than x number of steps then you're kind of cooking i would i would you know even though i make my weird ass quesadilla in the microwave i assemble it all i cut you know yeah. cut the cheese i assemble it 
am I saying I'm cooking something? Well, you know, it feels like I'm cooking something, even though I'm just assembling yeah. it and throwing it into the microwave. But yeah. I, mean, I, I, n- I know, I know. There's a number of steps there that's sort of a, a threshold. I'll let you have that opinion. Yeah, yeah. My, no, no, my it's just a, it's self, a, it's a guideline. It's I not don't, a rule. Yeah, yeah. You know. My my thing now, if I'm interested in recipes, and I still collect recipes, especially now since you can do it online easily, right. I will look at the number of ingredients. Mm-hmm. And to me, that's it's like the list goes on and on. It's like, I don't care how much I want to make that. I'm not going to do it. Okay. Too many ingredients means too many steps. Yeah, generally. But sometimes if you really look at it, the ingredients are a whole bunch of different spices, and that's oh, yeah. you know, that's easy to do. But right. sometimes it's all kinds of so, julienne, and I'm just and, not in the mood. And slicing, yeah, Chiff- chiffonade. You chiffonade your basil. Yeah. I don't even know what that is. What's chiffonading? Like if you have a basil leaf, or it could be other things. You can, you roll it up, and okay. you slice it very thinly. Oh, okay. From the roll. Okay. So you end up with a thin. Long, long um, string of like basil strips, whatever basil or, or whatever, like little strips, basil strips. Strips, yeah. yeah, strips. I mean, I thought cutting stuff into strips was julienning. That's cutting it into a rectangular prism. Gotcha. Okay. It's more solid. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's more solid items. And, it's not like. And this is for the thinner, thinner things like leaves. Right. Anything leafy. Right, right, that way. But if you're doing something like julienne, like a, using a mandolin, that can, sometimes yeah. you've got those ones that do the little, like the blades that do the lines, the sort of julienne-esque right. or, yeah. I don't know. No, what they, yeah, they it? do. What, what was it called again? Chiffonade? Yeah, chiffonade. chiffonade. You wouldn't do that on any machine. Okay. You because just... it would mangle, it would mangle the soft leaf. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. Wow. Yeah. Nora impressing me with the cooking terms. <laughs> um, I actually corrected your father once. Oh. On a cooking term. Okay. But we won't go there. Why not? Because I might be wrong, and then everybody, <laughs> all of your audience will say, "Wait a minute, Nora." That's the. But that's you. I know. I know. So well, it was about macerating. Do you know how to macerate? I don't even. I can't even begin <laughs> to. It sounds like uh, chewing. But that's mastication, right? Masticating? Yeah, that's masticate. Is right. That's right. I always knew it as softening and bringing out juices okay. of your fruit or whatever with sugar. You put sugar on oh, something. Oh, like with strawberries. Put sugar on strawberries. Yeah. 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 And it, it works with other things too, usually fruit because it's sugar. Okay. And it, it softens it. It brings some of the liquids out of the fruit. It's a way to soften and liquefy your fruits. Ah. And your dad thought it was just a way to, it had nothing to do with sugar, but a way to almost like muddle fruits or something. Okay, okay. so a form of muddling. K- kind of, just yeah. sort of smashing things up and sure it gets wet and they're softer. Right. What is it called again? Macerate. Macerate. Yeah. Okay. M-A-C-E-R-A-T-E, I think. Yes, macerate, to soften or become softened by soaking in a liquid. So Exactly, but I've heard chefs say with sugar. Okay. With, Plus, with, that's with, what Tom and I learned. Right. It does make sense to call it that. Maceration is a process of preparing foods through the softening or breaking into pieces using a liquid. <laughs> Raw, dried, or preserved fruit or vegetables are soaked in a liquid. See, this is why I didn't want to tell you what it was. Because <laughs> it's supposed to be in liquid, but softening is the key thing. So you were both in the same ballpark. Right, right. But even now when I watch TV and someone talks about macerating, they talk about sugar. Okay, okay. They even say, you know. Right. So, But I guess you can do it other ways, sure. My way's right. <laughs> Always, right? Is that, isn't that the way it is? <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get on to video games here. Yeah, let's, yeah. Unless you have any cooked things you want to bring up, any additional cooking things, cooking experiences or... Can't you know. think of anything. If we were talking about eating, I could yeah. go on and on. You know, have you ever tried those meals that a lot of podcasts that will advertise for these places that they just send to you, like HelloFresh is one of them, 
where they send blue you, apron. Yeah, blue apron, right? Where they send you the ingredients and then you assemble them and you cook them. Um, have you ever tried any right. of those? Or I've no? never done it. No, I have not. I think Anne might have. Okay. I always think you have to get a subscription, and I don't want that. I want to try it first and see if I like it. Yeah. It seems to me like something you would, you know, like if you were preparing for a party, maybe that would be something good. But I think they're just trying to get people on board with eating things that are healthier, I guess, with the ingredients. Mm -hmm. And this is something. And the ingredients are all there. Correct. And you have your recipe. And if you want to make it later, you can assemble the ingredients mm-hmm. yourself. And, you know, it's it's kind of an interesting right. concept that yeah. has been brought about probably because of technology, it being a lot more safe or yeah. faster to transport food items in the mail by delivery. Now. Yeah, delivery. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think so. I wonder if the pandemic had anything to do with it. Maybe that improved things a little bit. Um, improved it, yeah, because I think they were there before. Yeah, I mean, I'm almost certain they experienced a spike in sales. Right. There was a date kind of place where you went to a location and you prepared the things Oh. in a Hello Chef kind of way, and then you would go home and assemble it. So it was sort of a, it was the same concept, except you went there and you prepared all the food. You were still involved in making the meal, but you were doing it there and they were showing you how, you know, various techniques of how to assemble these items or whatever. And then you would go home and just heat up the ingredients or assemble the ingredients and then go from there. Yeah. But, I never heard of that, but it sounds like a good idea. Well, it sounds like a good idea for people who like doing it. Oh, yeah. Whereas HelloFresh is something that's like, well, I don't have the time, but I want to cook a fresh meal. Right. Let's get on to games involving food. Or not games involving food. Cooking. Yes. Games involving the art of cooking. The art of cookery. Do you have a game that you've been playing recently that involves cooking? <laughs> Well, I tried one because I thought it would be, it looked cute. Okay. And it, it's, it was um, Cats and Soup. Cats and Soup. It's adorable. It's, I mean, they're just the cutest little cats. I found out that you don't do anything. Like regularly in games, you do things. Uh-huh. They sell soup and juice and you collect money from it and then you can buy more things. In the meantime, you watch tons of ads. Yeah. If you want more money. And when I sent you a picture and it the um, um another one came up that was advertising the game mm-hmm. and it said it was an idle game. Yes. And I had never heard of that before. Yeah. Idle games are something that I think they used to be they used to have mechanics in games that were idle mechanics where you would for example hmm. send off in a role playing game right you as mm-hmm. you're playing this game you say hey i've got a dwarf and i've got an elf <laughs> who are not doing anything right now so let me send them off to this location and then they can bring back stuff for me and then you could play the game that was an idle mechanic okay it was something okay. that was going on you weren't actually controlling it. You weren't actually doing anything. It was just right. you send them off, and when they come back, they give you stuff. And right, then right. in mobile games, I think that's where idle mechanics started taking off. I mean, there were a handful of games where you would just monitor situations. But, yeah, yeah. there is a whole genre of idle games where all you do is watch them do things and level things up and then... There's minimal wow. sort of interaction with, with them. Yeah, yeah. Which is, sounds like what Cats and Soup is soup, all yeah. about. I, You know, I used to ask about when you, you would tell me about games, and I'd always say, is there a Zen mode? Okay, Because yeah. that's what I, you know, I, I like to just play, and a Zen mode generally means you always have a play. You're not going to get stuck. Right. And so you can just sit there and play and play. Mm-hmm. And and Cats and Soup is less than Zen. <laughs> it's it's just, I still think it's cute and I still have it on and, and sell the soup. But meanwhile, I'll be doing something else. Yeah. <laughs> you know? 
it's like so yeah that's, that's I'll, a, I'll get tired of it too and there are games that have idle mechanics where you just let it go and but then the game yeah. itself being idle and then as you get more money you build other things that right produce yeah. other and that, things you do that in this too yeah yeah, yeah. less than zen huh yeah right. does that mean you're bored <laughs> When you say that you're less than Zen, does that mean you're bored? I guess, yeah. I mean, it could. It is getting really boring. Yeah. <laughs> Another thing that, you know, I'm sure you've encountered ads in in games before, right? In oh, yeah, mobile definitely. Games. Yeah. And there's definitely. usually... There's usually a, it's a choice. Yep, yep. That's, that's usually, yeah. Uh, yeah, those... The times where you would be forced to watch ads are over because people don't want that. Right. If if you opt into watching an ad, you need a payoff of some sort, and usually you get some sort of in-game currency or you know yeah. a free something right. or right. free stars or right. free power or whatever. Right, right, right. And that's the first time you've ever tried an idle game, huh? Yes. I, I didn't, like I said, I didn't know it was going to be quite that idle. Right. So right. so the only component um, involved in this is the soup that gets cooked by the cute little right. um, Sanrio-esque kitties. Yes, they also make chews. <laughs> okay, all right. In, in different flavors. Yeah, it's, it's cold so. soup. <laughs> Isn't that what the juice <laughs> is? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me some yes, cold soup. You know what? I had this one interesting soup in Chicago. I can't remember the restaurant I went to, but it was a hmm. watermelon fruit soup as a dessert. Ooh. And it had some sort of berry essence in it. So it wasn't just watermelon. But I thought it was like, that's Sound? really delicious. It sounds, yeah, it yeah. sounds delicious. It was like a watermelon mint berry kind of thing. You made a fruit soup once, cold fruit soup once for one of my gatherings. Oh, I, I did, didn't I? I think I was inspired by I, that. I whole think thing. they're great. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Um, I think they're good. Yeah. Another thing that, you know, like yeah. if we're talking good soups, man, I know we're getting off the subject of games here, but good soups and good butternut squash soup. Oh, mm -hmm. my gosh. Yeah. So good. So it is. Good. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, nowadays, this might not bother you, but as an older, person with not a lot of arm strength mm -hmm. nowadays you can at the grocery store you can buy little chopped up pieces of butternut squash and and other oh yeah, hard yeah. to cut squashes right, right so so i could actually try and make something like that one of the selling points of hello fresh or the blue what apron yes right? yeah yes um yeah. pre-chopped so. ingredients Probably usually more expensive because of all that labor. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. I wonder how much they make on those. I always thought, you know, something like, you know, we talked about baby carrots, right? Mm. That's sort of a prepping thing, right? Don't notice much of a price difference between those and the actual carrots. I don't know anything about how they're they're done. Yeah. And um, these days, everything costs so much, it's silly. Yeah, but let's not go down that road because... Right, where were we at games, weren't we? I'm, do I'm done with Cats and Soup. Okay. But you sent me something, Food Wars. Yeah, a little, okay, so that uh, isn't... A trial. That, that isn't a game, that's a series that as part of... Oh. Yeah, that's a, that's okay. a television series. But it does look kind of game-like called Food Wars... Let me see if I can get this right. Food Wars, exclamation point, Shokugeki no Soma... Uh, yeah. <laughs> it was a Japanese manga series first, written by Yuto Tsukuda okay. and illustrated by Sean Saki. It was made into the series that it is now in Shonen Jump, which is a big company that makes sort of more action-y kind of like exciting, like robot-esque, you know, kind of like... Okay. <laughs> it's a very sort of... Shonen Jump does a... If I say Naruto, you're not going to understand what I'm talking about, but it's kind of like, no. <laughs> the whole thing is like, generally it's people developing their skills and whatever. And it's like, re they're really excited about it. Like usually uh. it's, it's something like, like fighting or, you know, the, like it started yeah. out with fighting things. Right. And, or like, you know, we're going to save right. the, save the planet from these blah, 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 or whatever. Well, then they started right. doing it in various other things. There was a, a soccer one where it's ah. where it's Captain Tsubasa who is a uh, young soccer 
team leader who's like, we're going to play soccer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm really yeah, excited right. about soccer. The Food Wars is kind of in that sort of vein. Some people don't like that, that they're approaching this cooking sort of show that way, but it's kind of, it's, it's kind of absurd in, in some ways. It was, are all of those, the soccer ones and all the other ones, as sensual, sexual? Oh, as no. <laughs> oh, no. Like, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, it does have some. And the, the, the female is in their little schoolgirl outfit right. with her uh, above the knee highs, you mm-hmm. know. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's. Can, can we say? Yeah, that. I mean, I think that's. Let's not get on, onto the schoolgirl thing <laughs> and not the way that works in in Japan. I know, there I is, know. but there, I mean, the whole thing. Is yeah, sexual. To some to some people, the whole the schoolgirl thing. I mean, I think if you're in Japan and you're a Japanese schoolgirl in Japan, there is a yes, that is the uniform, right? But I mean, I think there is sort of a a way that it's viewed from our standpoint in America that may be interpreted sometimes as sort of a sexual thing. Although, I mean, how is that any different than... You no, know? no, but that wasn't what... That was an aside. Oh, okay. The sexual was when they were doing the food. I mean, they were orgasmic when they tasted exactly. the Exactly. Actually, yeah. people refer to those as foodgasms in, in the show. Well, okay. I mean, they don't okay. refer to them in the show. <laughs> and it's just like these things where they taste the food and their pupil yeah. dilates yes. and then... The, then yeah. of course they envision themselves in a field being held by a whatever a naked man yeah. or yeah. naked uh, yeah uh, naked that was another <laughs> well they weren't completely hey, naked, naked but I mean yeah they were no. they were okay. yeah they were naked ish there were there were <laughs> there were some sensor bars I mean like you know things cover objects covering but it was yeah 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 it delivers the sort of have you ever had a, a food item that that evoked such an emotion that it was just so delicious and amazing that you had thoughts that kind of went in not necessarily sexual directions. Yeah, but, I know, I know. Yeah. But they were particularly wonderful. It was a partic yeah. 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 I mean and that's what the whole purpose is to kind of deliver sure. this it's sort of an out of body experience. And yes, there are a lot of like schoolgirls that turn into bees that are dripping honey on some dude. And <laughs> it's like, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought it was funny. I'm not like, oh my God. How right. could they? <laughs> Right. I, mean, I thought it was funny. Right. I think it's hilarious. And I think you actually, if you had a chance to check it out, I mean, even the yeah. English dub version is done pretty well. I mean, you know, I would, uh-huh. I prefer use, reading the subtitles in general and listening to the Japanese because that's what, right. trying to absorb various phrases and whatnot, there's sort of a familiarity right. If I go to Japan with the language that would not let me feel like I was right. a foreigner. You yeah. know what I mean? I, I know I'm a foreigner, oh, yeah, but it was like, you know, it was one of those things where it's like listening to the language itself, just listening to it is getting accustomed to the way right, right, are right. said. Yeah, they have different cadences and, yeah. and uh, uh, accents. And, and I, I mean, accents like strong part of a word or sentence. Right. The whole series is about this kid who works with his father in a local eatery. And uh-huh. so he, you know, he and his father own this or have this restaurant where they cook things for people. And he's like, you know, the best hole in the wall place in town kind of thing, right? Yeah. And then, of course, there's a little drama that happens. But um, then yeah. he, uh, his son goes off to who? who for some reason derives pleasure by making things that sound gross together. Okay. Like there's a, there is an incident involving peanut butter and squid that um, oh. <laughs> if you, if you yeah, think that's... the food gasm was crazy, this is the anti food gasm where. Yeah, right, right. 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 But, but I mean, it only happens once in the series or once or twice where it's like he, he does yeah. that just for, trying to mix the weirdest combinations together. Another thing about the show, right. along with the manga, it's also has been praised for some of the recipes being accurate. So so some of the stuff on the show too. Oh. There are people who have tried and it, you know and they seem to be reasonably accomplished. Like there's one in the first season where they don't have any meat 
And so the kid says, well, I got these potatoes and then I'm going to wrap it in bacon and then I'm going to do this thing and make it taste like you're eating meat. Yeah. I'm sure you can find a lot of YouTube videos where, where people have tried to test the recipes, but people have praised the recipes being more realistic than anything else on okay. any other okay. show. I don't think you're going to get the same response as far as foodgasms. Right, right. It's, it's a fun show. I think you might like it just for the absurd. Yeah. To me, yeah. those foodgasms are funny. Uh, yeah, I, I thought so too. I kind of wait for so them because they're hilarious. And it's like they're very serious about the food. The little kid and ends up being sent to this prestigious cooking school that he didn't know his father went to. Oh. Right. And part okay. of the being in the cooking school is doing these battles to become the best chef. And they're cooking battles and there's a cooking competition that occurs. So okay. that's part of the whole story arc is becoming a member of the council by being one of the best chefs and, you know, other drama uh -huh. stories uh -huh. going on in the background. Yeah, but, makes sense. Yeah. It's a fun show to watch. And then we mentioned Iron Chef being the show that premiered in Japan in 1993, yes. which is a stylized yes. cook-off sort of show involving two chefs that right. have a, an ingredient that can be, uh, usually it's like, it's a tricky ingredient, right? It's something like you've got to make things with this ingredient in your whole right. meal that you prepare. And right. uh, that show lasted, I think it was like... I don't know how many seasons. I believe it was like six years. Oh, okay. The Japanese version was on a couple of the Food Network, I think, and a couple of other cooking right. channels. And then, but they they have America. Oh, sorry, go on. That, well, that's what I was going to say. Is is the American version mm -hmm. followed because of the popularity of those? Do you watch any cooking shows other than the British Bake Off? Do you like those kinds of shows where there are challenges yeah, involving I, things like that? Yeah, I do. I do. Um, I I watched. Occasionally, I'll watch some where the cooks do nasty things to the other cooks. Oh, and I, I don't, I don't want to see that. What do you mean nasty you know? things? Oh, uh, <laughs> silly, silly things. Uh, uh, I can't remember. Um, like the, or one of the things was that they were making something and they needed a sheet pan for it, and so the cook went into the pantry and took all the sheet pans. Oh, okay. So the, like the dirty, mean, sneaky, that kind of thing. thing. Right. Yeah, yeah. And there were other things too. Yeah. But, okay. So they, they, yeah. they are actually, right. So those, those, but yeah, those types of things. Few and far between. Whenever you have any kind of competition show, you know, what people think makes good television is having that kind of drama, right? What are they going to do without yeah. the, you know, without the sheet pans? Uh -huh. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and sometimes it bites them in the ass as far as that's concerned. I mean, sometimes yeah, it's like they've, right, got, right. That they've got a better idea or something that works better. Right. Sheep pans, that's very specific. <laughs> that's the only thing I remember. There were a bunch of other things. Okay. Too. Yeah, actually, you know what? There was a game, a show that I liked that was called Ready, Set, Cook. And the premise of the game show mm -hmm. was that you come to the studio with a bag of ingredients that cost no more than $10. You could spend only $10 on this bag of ingredients. Oh, and okay. And you got paired up randomly with a chef. And what you would do is you would, you know, the chef would work, you would help the chef prepare something involving all these ingredients and there would be a battle uh -huh. between, it wouldn't be the same bag. It would be different, you know, different contestants with different bags. Right, right, right. I also saw a very, and that show was a lot of fun because it was just like, you know, a $10 yeah. bag of food. You could mix what, it up. what you can do with that. Yeah. yeah. Right. You don't know. It's it's kind of cool, right? It's, you know, yeah. the, watching, watching a chef use their creativity to come up with something. A, I forget what the name of this television show was called, was called but it was a relatively recent show involving you would you would have there was a cooking competition with various chefs right but but the whole yeah. premise of it revolved around games involving getting people's grocery carts as they came out of the place and buying them so you had a limited amount of money and you said oh. I'll give you 50 bucks for your entire grocery cart or yeah you know and then they wow. would use only the items that 
came in the grocery cart yeah. for making their stuff. Wow. And there was some interaction between yeah. them and, and some people would say, No, I'm gonna keep my things, but they would, you know, they would come up with an idea, whatever the theme was, and then they'd be looking for it, but then they wouldn't always get that. So they had to another creative sort of use. Which yeah. was also a fun sort of thing. But hmm. Yeah, I never heard of that. Probably didn't go on because of COVID. I mean, that was around the time I saw it. Was around that oh, whole, yeah. when it happened. But cooking shows are fun. Can be fun. Yes, definitely. To go back to the game part, this game reminds me of an Iron Chef and Food Wars combo. Uh huh. You're a local chef who wants to be this master chef, and you you know you want to uh-huh. uh, cook against the other best people across the country to win the title of being on this right. group of chefs. What this group of chefs does through the country that's so heroic, once you become a chef, it's like, yeah. yes, they, you became a chef. And like, what, do they, what do they do? Food research? Well, I mean, it's like, <laughs> and they have special uniforms and whatnot, but uh-huh. it's sort of a combination of a puzzle game and a side-scrolling 2D action game where hmm. you play as a character... The title of it is Battle Chef Brigade. Trinket Studios and published by Adult Swim Games. It came out for Windows and Nintendo Switch in 2017. It was a game that was crowdfunded. $100,000 they raised through Kickstarter okay. to create this game back in 2014. Okay. What you have to do is you have to find your ingredients in this 2D side-scrolling world and use uh-huh. your various powers to kill and use these ingredients to create yeah. something. The way you create in the kitchen is by combining these each each food item Basically, it looks like it's got a colored pattern on it, sort of like a Tetris. The most of them make up four like little squares, right? And it's a four by okay. four formation, which is your cooking station. So all your ingredients, you drop them into wherever you're cooking, and then you have to cook them by stirring them, <laughs> which is basically rotating them into certain configurations yeah. to match three yeah. And sometimes more. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then they create taste gems. And as they increase in taste and flavor, the thing that you make, it changes it or yeah. makes it, improves it. And you're cooking right. for judges. So they give you like, I want something that has this element in it, or I want something that has a lot of this hmm. element in it. And then also you have to adhere to in those environments that are 2D, the ingredients you can come across probably like eight or 10 different ingredients in each environment. But there is usually a focus ingredient that you have to work on. And it's like, you Mm -hmm. know, very much like the Iron Chef. So this one is dragon whatever, or this is... (laughs) And I showed you a bit of it to you. What did you think? But was that the one where she was out chasing chi stomachs? Oh. (laughs) (laughs) Was that a different one? No, no, no. That was the, the the one where she went out into her backyard yeah. to kill all the things, and they the they had right, the right, little... and go and find a, a stuff, and yeah. yeah, and then use it in the kitchen, and then assemble it. Right. And there were various ways. There's like, it's not just that game where you're doing battles, right? Right. It also has a couple of other modes throughout the story part of the game, where you're going to this town and doing work and trying to find oh, other okay. people to battle against in this competition. And when you Okay. When you finally defeat them, you get a special item and then all these things in the town, there's a hunting sort of mini game that you can do oh. independent of the cooking competition. There's a puzzle one where it's like you have to figure out how to make a meal that has this much flavor. Ah, uh, okay. It not timed though, but it's like, you know, you have to figure out how to manipulate the puzzle to make something that right hits that target. And then there's also a speed round kind of thing where you're working in a kitchen mm. and you have to basically assemble existing ingredients in a certain configuration. The the customer wants this configuration of items and then you have right. to right. rotate the pieces in order to make those configurations and then someone comes by and picks them up. So it's like you're working in a 
in a kitchen doing that. Yeah, right. And right. all those things combine into making money that you can buy power-ups and things to yes. improve the things that you use in the kitchen, like you can different pans and then also different ingredients that give you special powers or like special, you know, special ingredients. Yeah. And then also special knives. Special knives. <laughs> Also, powers that you can buy at the store or whatever for each character, but it's uh-huh. it's a fun little game. I wish it were yeah. a little more complex, like the the fighting sequences oh, yeah. and and being able to. I mean, I'm comparing it sort of to I told you about Sakura of Rice and Ruin, which was that yes rice growing simulator, right? Yeah, and that had a lot of similar sort of components that you would you would bring these things back to make manure not cooking stuff or you would oh. bring them back to give to the person to cook <laughs> okay. but the focus wasn't on the cooking it was collecting all the ingredients okay. but yeah you know as you did that in the side scrolling environment there were a lot more powers to explore whereas this is a very limited number of powers it's a very basic side scrolling beat em up thing that you're doing here yeah i've almost completed the whole game but it's still fun and they have okay yeah yeah I really like it. Yeah. I mean, it's a you know, it's a, a fun, right. goofy Japan animation esque kind of story. Yeah, I thought it was kind of fun. Yeah. watching. So. Yeah, that's cute. I also showed you a game called Cook Serve Delicious, which is a restaurant simulation video game. A less of a cooking oh, game, yeah. I guess, but it was developed in 2012 and published by Vertigo Games. You basically, you're running a restaurant and determining what things are on the menu and correctly mm-hmm. creating the orders and sending them to your customers. And it's timed, right? I mean, you it's yeah. Uh, there's o- only so much time to prepare the whatever. Correct. Correct. To get it to the customer. Yes, yes. it is very much a time management game where you have a time limit and you've got to, and people are waiting for their food, and so. Right. Each version of this, the very first one, and I think I showed you this, uh, the game itself, your orders would come in on the left-hand side, and you had your little tabs. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And that was the only thing that was on the first one, managing those. Okay. Okay. Then when the second version of this came out, it had added those stations where you could prep things ahead of time to send out when they're done. Ah, uh-huh. Okay. Right. So okay. that was added in the second version. This has the holding stations mechanic. The second version, Cook Serve Delicious 2, also included <laughs> very... <laughs> what? <laughs> Cooks are delicious too? No. Cook Serve Delicious. Cook, oh, comma, okay, serve, okay. serve <laughs> comma, delicious <laughs> 2. Cooks are delicious too? <laughs> yes. The cannibalism game. Sure. Yes. Yeah, right. Cook, serve, delicious. Maybe I should separate those by spaces. Yeah. But Cook, serve, yeah, delicious yeah. too was the one that had the holding stations mechanic and also various miscellaneous restaurant tasks to perform. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. Every once in a while, there'd be a random task that would happen like your something in the kitchen would be on fire and then you would have to press a certain button in order to use the fire extinguisher and then they also okay, had yeah. one where your restaurant was held up by a, a guy with a mask or a gun and you'd have to kick him in various ways by pressing various keys on the keyboard in order oh, to okay. yeah okay which was kind of silly that was kind of one of the things that they added to the second one yeah and for the third one which is the one that i showed you they removed the chores and added more sort of quality of life improvements to the game Okay, okay. Like using the androids to serve all of the items simultaneously if you needed to do that. That's an Uh. easy shortcut. And then also they (laughs) added a mode that was a less intensive zen-like mode. What did you think of that game? The cooks are delicious, as you call it, game. (laughs) Okay, I'm not good with time management in games. Mm -hmm. I'm not good in time management in life. Okay. That's another story. Right. And I always just sort of get too nervous. It's like, for heaven's sakes, it's just a game kind of thing. But it's still, I'm under too much stress. 
And uh, the easy way for me to deal with that is not to play those. And there is. So you say there's a Zen mode? (laughs) There's a Zen mode in the third one, but it's still, I mean, I think at its core, it's it's repetitious. I mean, that's what it is. You're trying to manage the, the thing, but the tasks themselves are repetitious and you've got to figure out the order in in which to do them in such a way that you can get the best ratings of the food and you know it's not always clear yeah. how you have to serve them and it's not my kind of game but I can understand where people would like that kind of game it's kind of yeah diner dash ish in yeah my that's opinion. not my my thing either yeah i thought this is sort of funny a funny quote Mal Scott of the Stereogram reviewed this game. He was very positive about it and commenting that despite the game being re- uh, reasonably basic, it was much, much more than the sum of its parts. He also said that the game was difficult dubbing it the Dark Souls of Cooking Games. Remember we talked about Dark Souls? Yeah. No, you don't. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what this guy's... What what did he ever explain? What the much much more? Yeah, I I mean I think, uh, but it's it's like every person has their perspective. I don't yeah. I don't yeah agree you're with right, him, but it's like juggling, keeping all the balls up in the air at the same time. It might might be yeah. challenging, but that's you know that's the part that perhaps he liked about it. It's it's not my yeah. cup of tea, and calling it the Dark Souls of cooking games, I don't know if that's accurate either. <laughs> yeah, we're right. You know, Dark Souls being a very, very difficult game. I guess you could, it's only as difficult as you make it. We're going to go on to yes. the next game, which I showed you a video of. Oh. Which is called Overcooked. Oh. That was the one where the two little guys are preparing and assembling things. Overcooked is a game that's a cooking simulation game developed by Ghost Town Games and published by Team 17. Overcooked received many positive reviews upon release and was nominated for four awards at the 13th British Academy Game Awards. It won two of those awards, one for Best British Game and one for Best Family Game. Hmm. They came out with a sequel called Overcooked 2, which is the one that I showed you. But the general premise of the game, it is a cooperative game where you are prepping food and cooking food together. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I remember that. The company was founded by Phil Duncan and Ali Devine, who had previously worked at Frontier Development for about eight years before they left the company to start their own. They wanted to make a cooperative game that was focused on being a cooperative game, noting how ah. most games only add cooperation components as an afterthought. Uh-huh. They developed the game first, but then the co-op mode is not yeah. you know, part of the way the game was designed. And now, I think the opposite is true, too. When you're developing a game, you can do it one of two ways, or you can do them side to side, but I mean, they kind of are yeah. related to each other, right? The one-player experience and the two-player experience. So sometimes yeah, there yeah. are multiplayer experiences where it feels like the one-player experience is sort of tacked on, and then vice versa. But they noticed that based on Duncan's past experience in restaurants. Yeah. According to him, and here's, uh, this is a wonderful quote. I just love this quote. He says, kitchens have always struck me as a perfect analogy for a cooperative game. An occupation Hmm. where teamwork, time management, spatial awareness, and shouting are vitally important. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. Right. Right. There's a reason why I call this game the Friendship Destroyer, because I have seen it. (laughs) I mean, I don't know (laughs) if it actually destroys friendships, but there's a lot of yelling that goes on when people are playing it, even online. But it's, yeah, Yeah. it's it's sort of, it's got a puzzly element. There's a time component to it. It has more depth to me than something like a Cook, Serve, Delicious, because there is, you're you're prepping these ingredients and the location of the ingredients can be different. You, you're throwing ingredients right. to the cook, uh, right. the cooks. Right. You're manipulating things. There's a, part, a puzzle component where you're supposed to figure out the best way to prepare all these things and transfer them from person to person. It's a fun-looking game to play with multiple people. Yeah, You can play it single. You can control both cooks. 
But I mean, to me, it seems uh-huh. like that kind of defeats the purpose of the game. It looks generally like it's a co-op game, and that's basically it. Yeah, you're right. It would make it more of a game. Yeah. Not you, just a, I'll do this. Right. What do, you, what do you think about it? What did you think about it? It was kind of interesting, actually. Yeah. At first, I didn't, you know, it was like, okay. It's hard to understand what's going on right away. Right. As a viewer. Right. Because, I, like, I, I had to ask you where, where they served the food. Yeah. I mean, they prepared it. They did all that stuff. And then what happened? Right. And you had to point that out. You know, and that's mid-game. I mean, they started out much, much more basic than that, the levels do. But, you know, and they yeah. get more and more complex as you go through the game itself yeah. or the chapters. But, yeah, right. I mean, at its core, it is a cooperative game that I remember someone asked me about cooperative games. I would not recommend this game to a girlfriend who is trying to get a boyfriend into games or vice versa uh-huh, uh-huh. because it can be frustrating. Something that's more cooperative in a way where you're advancing the story because of your cooperation. This seems like it would be yeah. too, it would be something you have to work up to, you know? It's not something you want yeah, to just yeah. spring on someone. It's fun, but right. I'm, I'm not sure it's the one to choose as far as <laughs> co-op games for introducing your partner to right. games. It's got a lot of positive reviews, and, and definitely during the pandemic, yeah. a lot of people were playing it on Twitch. So Yeah, I could, I could see that. Yeah. Uh, positive reviews and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Let's wrap it up with the one that I think that you might download and just check out. Although I think you okay. may you may get bored of it. It's called Cooking Mama. Oh. Cooking Mama was the one where you were actually doing the the cutting and the mincing and all of the different mini games. Yeah, yeah. Preparing the ingredients and it had sort of a cute look to it. It's based on yeah. a series that was created for the Nintendo double screen. The main feature of the handheld double screen was the fact that the the view screen was on the top and there was another screen on the bottom, but it was also a touch screen. Yeah. And because you demanded it, there was a stylus. So. (laughs) Right, right. I'm I'm not joking. It came with a stylus. But anyway, (laughs) so this company called Office Create originally uh, Mm -hmm. published that came up with the game. It was published, depending on the region, by Taito Majesco Entertainment or 505 games, we can talk about that later, that sometimes a game company will make a game and depending on which region it is, you'd have a different person publishing it in that region. Oh, okay. So at the time, it won IGN's Best of E3 award in 2006. It's also credited as kind of being the very first cooking game that involved doing Uh actual uh cooking tasks. The prep. Exactly. The prep and the cooking. Office Create actually, it became so popular. The series, which has sold over 4 million units worldwide. Oh, it just as of May 2009. But, <laughs> but anyway, um, oh. <laughs> Office Create <laughs> okay. uh, changed their name to Cooking Mama Limited because oh, that's basically okay. all they make now is just Cooking Mama games. Wow. Yeah. Because it was so oh. popular, and so that's like that's a franchise company, right? There was a game hmm. that they tried that was Gardening Mama, which was the same oh. thing, but with gardening. <laughs> yeah, which, well, I can see where that could, you know, you could it could be fun, I guess, but I think cooking is more. There's more variety in the tasks more, you have to do. Yep, variety, exactly, yeah. exactly. I mean, what do you do? You weed, you you. Uh, sow the seeds or whatever yeah. or you you yeah. know you it's a limited number of tasks and yeah you know. yeah and it's just like how how many different seeds are there a seed is a seed whereas ingredients yeah. have yeah. variety but um, right right and chemical reactions too yeah there's that too yeah i yeah. mean i think <laughs> so. i think the company is basically um we talked about this when when I showed you Cooking Mama, which is available on Apple Arcade, a version of it. What did you think of it as a game? You always ask me that stuff when when you showed me these things ages ago. Was that yesterday? That was yesterday. <laughs> yeah, I thought so. <laughs> I showed it to you hours uh, ago. Hours. All right, all right, all right. Tens of um, hours ago. 
I th- I remember parts of it. Yes. Yeah. It was just basically preparing the ingredients, slicing them. Right. Doing exactly. Stirring. I remember that. Yeah. And, and, and they, I, those things are called mini games, and and they have appeal because it's it's just little things to prepare the different ingredients in a step. And, right. Right. You know, it has a thing that you make at the end. You can make a uh, pot roast or meatloaf or depending on what ingredients. Uh-huh. In this uh-huh. game, in the arcade version, you get a selection of ingredients that's a rotating selection depending on which day or, you know, day of the week oh, you get yeah. it. There is some variety there, but they'll just add more and more recipes that you make and yeah. you unlock things to customize your kitchen. But I think this is a concept that has, yeah. I think it's pretty much run its course, honestly. It's something that I yeah. think you need to add more variety to it to make it something other than yeah. a fun kids game. And I'm not saying it's just for kids. Right. I'm saying that oh, that's the one we said were like, we thought it was like a kids game. It felt it felt like a kids I said game, that. doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah, I remember it. I yeah. remember it. And it had uh, annoying voiceovers too. Oh, yeah, well, I don't remember that. Where the <laughs> where the, the the mama was so excited that you prepared the eggs in a certain way or Oh, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. yeah. Every right, single right, thing. Right. Every single thing. You oh, you're getting wonder, entirely yeah. too much affection from your mother in that game. <laughs> I'd be suspect. Yeah. She's just saying that. Oh, yeah. either that or she's got something planned. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, right. That kind of wraps up the games that I wanted to talk about. Yeah, and I, you know, I don't have any games. Uh, well, I mean, you had Cats and Soup. With. Yeah, I know, I know. And I discovered that, geez, there really are idle games. Yes, yes. So, like yeah. literally <laughs> idle. Yeah, right. Um, right now I'm making a whole bunch of money and I'm not even, you know, yeah. I'm on your podcast exactly but, see yeah. you're playing a game while you're on the podcast yeah 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 I play Hot games. Damn. yeah yep <laughs> so anyway parting words of wisdom on the word cook uh, um let's all cook i want to cook yeah it's exciting and it makes you feel good yeah that you done something there's an accomplishment yes there is whether or not it's 100 percent delicious or not it's something that you learn and you can you know uh, it's, it's, right. it's, it's, it's got some creative creativity to it. It's got the uh, different components, but it's something that you make right. and that's usually right. fun. And it is an accomplishment. Yeah, yes. exactly. It's, and it's got a function, you know, to serve, right. to serve <laughs> yes, man, which is a cookbook. <laughs> Thank you very much, Nora, for joining us on this week's episode of the Too Vague podcast, talking about the word cook. Well, it was a pleasure, and it makes me want to start cooking again. Are you going to? Maybe. Maybe? Yeah, I have some things I, I kind of want to do, yeah. Okay, not like, not just uh, so. cookie-related? No. No, I have scones. Oh, cupcakes. okay. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Dinner kind of things. On that note, thank you very much for joining us on this week's episode of the Too Vague Podcast. My name is Ben. And I'm Nora. And we've been your hosts. Have a wonderful night. Bye.